Is it Saturday night already? It is Saturday night already. Hello, hello. People are joining us. Smiley faces and hellos from all. Hello. Where were we last week? Huh? We're, we were, were at, at Dragon, Con. Dragon Con last week. Yeah. Specifically, walk, probably walking around the art show at this point. Um, Not this late, actually. Good. Uh, I don't know. We're Saturday night. Didn't you have a art awards to do? Uh, yeah, I think it was Saturday night, wasn't it? Yes. And then we went to dinner. Oh, look at that. Awesome this, details. This is the piece I started, Don't I guess, uh, two weeks ago, right before Dragon Con, and the Saturday before Dragon Con. Mm. Hello from San Diego. Oh, San Diego. Love San Diego. <clears throat> yes, so you started this piece two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, and I worked on it uh, a bit at the show, and a bit since I've been home, but, but nothing like long term. I haven't spent a lot of time on it. Um, yeah. Took us enough time to recover. <laughs> so, yeah, well. It's a big show. Uh, Dragon Con? Yeah. Yes. It's a lot different than it was when I used to go to it. Um, you know, like I said, the last time I went to it was in 2010. Mm-hmm. Yeah. said it looks amazing. Oh, thank you. And beautiful. And hello, waves. I appreciate it. So, so we started getting together uh, well, cameras and everything for Twitch, right? Yep, we're gonna start um, a Twitch feed, and I got a uh, <clears throat> I got a Logitech uh, 4K uh, webcam. It's a Brio. It's up here. Mm -hmm. Recovery is an important part of Dragon Con. It, 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 <laughs> Music that is, Mara says that, that is, is exactly. definitely true. Oh my gosh, yes. So we got this uh, 4K webcam that we're going to start doing um, uh, Twitch streaming with. Of course, mm -hmm. on Twitch, it'll be, uh, I guess it's 1080p is the highest it'll go. Yeah. Uh, but I'm also going to do... Wait, uh, same name. I uh, underscore just draw. Yep. I Someone underscore. asked what your hand is sitting on. It's a board. Oops, this just is a flat board that's resting on two rails above and below my desk, up at the top and at the bottom. And so it's uh, essentially a mall stick when I don't want to get my hand messy. Um, for something like on really nice paper or whatever, uh, I I've decided that if I have to paint on a mall stick, which is you know you normally do, uh, then I'll also learn to you know manipulate and draw on a mall stick so that it doesn't feel so alien when I have to switch back switch over to painting too. Uh -huh. So uh, if you do it, there's just a, there's a period maybe of a you know a, depending on who you are to last longer or less. Um, it took me about a week of getting used to it, of getting used to having my hands up. You know, oh, above okay. it, and then once I did, I realized I could pretty much, I could draw from any angle. I could, you know, I could take it up here and draw like this if I want to. You know, not, not that there's a reason to do that, but I'm just saying that once you get used to moving your hand around, it it, it yeah. isn't a big deal. How long do you have ideas in your head before you start drawing? <laughs> Sometimes oh, you, know what? you have no ideas in your head. <laughs> Sometimes I start without an idea, and I just start with a feeling of a shape that I want to play with. Uh, but I I do definitely have some ideas that that pop into my head mm -hmm. and I've, I've been you know I'll, I'll throw down a, a quick like a thumbnail sketch of it sometimes or just a brief title because the title will remind me of the piece right and then you can do so sometimes they'll hang out for a while years a couple sometimes. years yeah because I, I, there are some pieces that I want to do that I felt like you know that in the past that I felt like I have to I have to get good enough to do it right. I have to I have to learn some things before I can do what I want to do mm -hmm. and then by the time I learn those things uh, my my aesthetic, my idea for the piece will have evolved as well. But uh, I do very often. I'll, I will oh, get. What, I moved uh, that. Oh, did you? Accidentally. That's it. Okay. That's all right. Nope. That's all right. Yeah, I ain't gonna hurt anything. All right. Um, artist Carolina. Yeah. Said thank you again for quickly looking at my gallery wall at Dragon Con. It was amazing to meet you in person. Oh, that's um, that's cool. Uh, I, I, if I remember correctly, um, I, I remember I remember walking over there. Mm -hmm. And I, I think I might have said something about maybe emailing me uh, so I can have a link and, and have a little bit more of an in-depth, you know, a time to, to look at the work. So if you'll do that, that'd be awesome. If, if you still want me to, that's cool. If you don't, um, I know we didn't have probably probably didn't have a lot of time at Dragon Con because mm. it was pretty busy. Rachel Rickenbacker says hello and I hope our trip home from Dragon Con went well. Oh, it was, it was great. Uneventful. Mm -hmm. yeah. and the storm was uneventful. Like we which got, is we, good. we we came home kind of uh, rushed, getting ready for that hurricane, which completely missed us. 
And it wasn't a hurricane. And it wasn't a hurricane. <laughs> it revved so, up and... I mean, not, not that that's a bad thing. I mean, I like storms. I, I don't like, obviously, don't like storms that damage people or property. Uh, but I still love them. I love storms in general. Uh, and it, it never really materialized, uh, which I guess is both good and bad mm. in a lot of ways. Guatemala says hello. Oh, hello, Guatemala. I, I love it when uh, uh, the different places say hi. So, and uh, we got to uh, see a lot of uh, old friends at Dragon Con and, mm-hmm. and, and meet a lot of new friends. I met a lot of people from Instagram at mm-hmm. Dragon Con that said uh, that they, they've been following us on Instagram. So, what are you doing? And you're drawing outside the box. Oh, am I? Yes. Oh. Well, I have... This Do you have a very... Me. Do you have a favorite Beksinski painting? A favorite one? Um, I have... Like yeah, groups of favorite. Which is, this is difficult to talk about, really, because he ne- remember he never titled any of them, right? So I, <laughs> I, I like titled number eighty four. Well, I like there's one that I don't have. I had it on my desk for a while, but it's it it's a drawing uh, that sort of looks like a horse in the in in the sky, but it also looks like a uh, uh, like a mummified wolf. I'll have to pull it out. It's hard. Uh, that that actually describes quite a lot of his work. <laughs> <laughs> But but I definitely have uh, favorites. Uh, but like I said, it's it's difficult to yes. to say because uh, he didn't really enjoy titling his work. Mm-hmm. Carolina Labar says yes, you remembered, and yes, I wanted to show you what pieces you inspired. Oh, and how? And so she will be emailing you. Please, yeah, that's and awesome. And I didn't get to meet her. Sorry, I missed you too. Well, uh, Vicky was over in the uh, running our other booth over in the uh, uh, dealers hall in the dealers room on the on the first floor. So uh, next year, we'll most likely uh, uh, just kind of condense ourselves over into the dealer's uh-huh. hall. So. Um, let's see. Everyone's saying hello from all these different places. Oh, that's awesome. Australia, New Zealand. Uh, I want to go to New Zealand and Australia at some point. Uh-huh. Guatemala. Said that. And Guatemala. That's awesome. How many hours or days do you usually spend on drawing your artwork? And are you really, you're really motivating? Oh, well, thank you. Um, I spend as much time as, as I possibly... You see, I'm, I have the opposite philosophy of a lot of things that happen nowadays. Uh, everything people do want, you know, in terms of contract work, you learn how to do things fast. Uh, in terms of my own personal work, all I ever want to do is take it slow. And because my work, personal work, suffers from moving too fast. Because I like to deliberate over it and think about it. So it can be anywhere from a 5 by 7 piece, which I'll do in a day or two, to like something like this if I were gonna so right now it's pretty simple it's a straightforward central vignetted figure mm-hmm. it, but if I wanted to do a full piece out to the edges and fill it in uh, linear time if I just started until I finished it would take about a week you know anything like and I've done bigger pieces I've done I've done 20 by 30 and I've taken as much time as a month uh, on some of them at like well like the good dog which was what about 14 inches tall it was four days. Uh, it was four days, and yeah. that's that's a pretty. Sig- I mean, there's a lot of drawing in that piece. That was a. But that was a challenge. Vicky Vicky bet me that I couldn't get it done in three days, and well, you almost. Got I it almost done got it done in three days. days. I got it done in four. So. Muse in the mirror says it's crazy to me that you also wait to learn techniques before starting certain pieces. He will always do that. <laughs> well, I, I do because I I can see where I want to go with it, and I and I look at it and go, I don't know how to do that yet, and so. Um, there's the, there's a, I mean there's also the philosophy which is totally valid of just diving into it and learning on the fly which I do that too I mean most of my stuff is every drawing I ever do I sort of have to learn how to draw certain parts of it in the middle of it uh, and nowadays because I kind of have, have had I've done more I, I don't really wait like that anymore but I like right. but like say 10 years ago there were pieces that I had in a sketchbook that I didn't get to work on get started on until I felt like I could actually do them justice so uh, you know it's not like that all the time though I mean most of the time uh, I'm like everybody else you just have an idea and you sit down and start working on it right but, Absolutely. but um, I, st- I still have sketches right now that like in the last year that I haven't gotten to yet because I was like okay this is gonna well. Sometimes it's just because I'm I'm too lazy to start it. Uh, there, like there are pieces that are that I look at and I go, this is gonna be an extensive thing and it's gonna take a lot of time. Yeah. I don't guess lazy is the right word. I, j- I just have like um, resistance. I have resistance to like if I if I want if there's a painting or a drawing I want to do that's gonna take three months or two months. Uh, 
I usually need I usually have this need inside me to produce more images faster than that uh, even though like I said before I like taking as much time as I can uh, Edward says your work is organic to me and I wonder if that's because if that's so because a great deal of time you start off not knowing where the work is going I think that's a, a great part of it is because I kind of uh, uh, I like to look at uh, at organic things I like to look at you know uh, root systems and and things in decay where you can see the structure that underlies the form and all that um, and 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 letting some of the like this is very this is more abstract uh, a lot of the stuff I did for the a lot of the stuff I did for the Copro show I actually did more representational uh, work but I also had some pieces like I you know uh, enter by the narrow gate was more like this um, so I go back and forth from being kind of abstract with it uh, to being fairly representational uh, and yeah the ones that are abstract tend to go very organic you know I tend to like the the repetitive like textures and patterns and things that can kind of create like a, a flow I like I, that dude's hair up there oh this Even yeah there is there is kind of this hair going on so, no, so. do you have HBO yes yes I do you have HBO yes I don't. that's an interesting question why do you ask <laughs> I have I have like HBO, Hulu, Netflix, uh, Prime Video, um, Voodoo, uh, and I go through periods of watching things. Uh, All the bad movies. I watch really really horrible like not B rated horror films, but like yeah. C and D. You yeah, know? that's true. He's seen uh, them all. Well, not all of them, but I've seen a lot. <laughs> I've seen a lot. So. Oh, Sharp Objects on HBO. I have been wanting to watch that. Too. I've heard some good things about it. Do you recommend it? They must. They must. Yeah. So check it out. Oh, okay. Well, I can't read that at this time. Yeah, that's end. true. Sorry. Sorry. Right. Do you have... Uh, we have a Pinterest board. Yes. Your Pinterest board is I, under I Just Draw. Yeah, it's up here. There's the, the one that you could probably find right away is uh, Where My Eyes Linger. And uh, let's see. It's right now. It's uh, I don't know if this. It says Alan Williams Art and Inspiration is I think the name of our yeah. our board. Or okay. I mean our, my my stuff. But uh, and then if you if you if you go there, the one that has the most in it is probably uh, where my eyes linger. And I have a bunch. Okay. I have a ton of private boards. Uh, but I'm gonna make some more public because I want to start a collection of people that I like that are that are people that are inspiring. Because when people ask, I'd go. I'd like to be able to, you know, point them to a kind of a collection of things. Right. Um, hold on. <laughs> oh, when you said resistance, I yeah, um, just finished the War of Art, fantastic book. Oh yeah, we read that years mm -hmm. ago. Yeah, you can have an apple, no problem. The War of Art is a uh, is was kind of a uh, kind of an instrumental book. You know, I, I love that and Art and Fear. Yeah. Check that one out too. Art different, and Fear is great. Different uh, author. Well, the War of Art is is about kind of. Uh, uh, letting yourself have the the kind of the permission to work hard on your own business side whereas art and fear is about making and finding your own purest version of your own work right. you Good know uh, and and uh, the war of art was uh, was 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 the first one we read and then was it art and fear no art and fear was the first one we read and the war of art was the second and i great, i used really. to i used to carry copies of that book both of those books to give them away because there's i think they're very important yes <laughs> so, um, where do you usually have galleries? You're the next Bixensky slash Geiger. Oh, well, that is a two kind. Uh, the gallery that I currently showed at was at Capro. Uh, they Capra have a couple more in, pieces. In Santa uh, Monica. In Santa Monica, uh, in California. And if you want to see some of it, I mean, they still have some. If you go and find my name on their site, it's listed mm -hmm. under my name. Mm -hmm. uh, but that that was a very kind thing to say, by the way. Thank you. Even though I don't, you know, those. People are, you know, <laughs> amazingly inspirational. He is stuttering. He doesn't know what to say. Well, yeah, because I mean, I grew, I grew up looking at, you know, at Geiger, and actually, I didn't come to Beksinski until later. A couple years late, a couple yeah. years ago. Uh, more than a couple. Years. More than a couple. More like uh, about ten years. Yeah, you know, around seven to ten years ago, I started looking at Beksinski. But you know what's funny is I find a lot of their work to be similar, in the fact that they're kind of, um, so Geiger would do repetitive patterns that were more mechanical. And he would like take a human element and make it look mechanical, and 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 biomechanical, and Beksinski would take things that had repetitive elements in them, but make them look more organic. So they were sort of like, sort of playing with the some of the same stuff, but going in two 
like opposing directions with it. Uh, mm -hmm. They want to see you draw. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Well, this is right you now. Talk with your I'm, hands. I'm sort of noodling. Uh, You're noodling. Someone asked how much time you have in this drawing. This is the drawing he started two weeks ago on that center point. Right here. Yeah. Right there yeah. uh, on the live feed, which I'll get that one up on Patreon and YouTube soon. So um, I'd say probably linear time. Uh, you worked on it Sunday after there, yeah. and then you messed gonna, with it. I'm going to say 10 hours, you know, give or take. Um, but because they keep like it's hard to de to determine because I'll work on it for like half an hour here and there and and it's like then it'll go do something else yeah then it'll go do uh, but w at first I I figured out that this guy this was a representation of sort of an abstract uh, a seal some kind of a seal because it kind of reminds me of a seal uh, and not the water not seal, not right? the water seal a se <laughs> you know a seal that binds things right, you know right, right? yes yes uh, and so right now though I'm actually thinking of it in terms of an element of something else. Uh, like this might be the side, one side, uh, if you flip it over and mirror it, of, of some sort of a gate or a portal or part of an architecture that leads off to the page. Mm -hmm. Someone but, wants to know if you believe in ghosts. Um, I mm. believe in the possibility of ghosts. Uh, that's all I can say, having never experienced a ghost. So I believe in many possibilities, uh, and I don't like to discount many things. Um, I can only say that, I, you know, I haven't seen it, but I like... I my belief resides in the fact that I hope such things exist, I guess you could say. Um, I've had, you know, uh, when I was younger, you know, things that could have been like what you would call like a, a, a paranormal experience, but it was mostly, you know, my rational mind came up with fairly convenient ex uh, explanations Crazy, for yes. those things. So, huh? Cochrane Artworks wants to know, why do surfaces stop accepting graphite? Uh, when they get too polished, when you've burnished them, uh, and the tooth has been flattened out. Uh, That's why everything gets really it shiny. It gets shiny and smooth. And that happens when, when you start, instead of building up values to make dark very slowly and very softly, because all of these darks are built up uh, very softly, believe it or not. They're not, I didn't really uh, bear down very hard for any of this stuff. It just got built up over a period of time. And, mm -hmm. But when you start to push down on the paper, all of this tooth on the paper starts to just get flattened out mm -hmm. and then the graphite just starts sliding on the top of it. The same thing happens sometimes I think with that uh, clay board that I use. Uh, there are times when it'll just it'll just stop taking graphite and you're just like, right. it's, you know, there's a spot it's like it. it'll be like drawing on glass at that point. Mm -hmm. And then you have to kind of go back and rough it up a little bit with something right. like a micro sandpaper or something that might help. But you got to be careful with all that because you can, you can quickly get out of control. Mm -hmm. So. Do you like Alan Moore's stuff? Yes, I do. I like Alan Moore. I like, uh, you know, I like, there's so many of those guys. Like, uh, what's his name? Um, I don't know. Alan Moore's one. Um, Jeff? He'll remember it. Yeah, I'll remember, I'll remember it. I remember it. I keep, I did this in the way home on, on the car. I like, we had this huge discussion and then there was a name I couldn't remember and then the, in the <laughs> middle of a, another discussion, like two hours <laughs> later, I, I, I said, oh. Yelled it out. I yelled it out. Yes. Have you ever tried sleeping in a cemetery to see ghosts? I have not tried that. No. He mm -hmm. would go, no, because his imagination is too uh, Here's the thing. Being an artist, uh, and a lot of us have this. Uh, what? Oh, I'm, I'm out of the range. Oh, yeah. A lot of us have this thing where, where we, um, I think Stephen King said it when he was, uh, he was writing a Bag of Bones. Uh, we've sort of trained our minds to misbehave and go in any direction they want to. And I can easily imagine things. Uh, and I can imagine them so powerfully that, you know, I can wake up and see them briefly, you know, so um, whether I'm not going to say that something like that may not exist. I'm just going to say that I wouldn't maybe perhaps know the difference between a real thing and something that I could imagine for myself, uh, uh, you know. But that being said, you know, like I said, I still hope that I mean, to be honest, don't don't most people, you know, who want to believe in ghosts and do believe in ghosts. I mean, wouldn't that sort of be that thing that would prove to you that uh, that the afterlife was real? I mean, I think people want to. They want to believe it. They want to see a ghost. And because it, in that one instance, all of a sudden, everything be, kind of becomes more tangible. Like, the fact that something exists after you die would become a, a solid fact for you. And, uh, you know, uh, I, we, we've had discuss long discussions, me and my kid, uh, Duncan, about it. Because I, I say that, you know, that it's, it's a strange thing to see in a horror movie when people get all freaked out when they see a ghost. Because to me, there's, if you were to really see something, 
and it was right there in front of you, many questions about the world would, would suddenly be answered, you know, in a very, very uh, real, you know, in a very real way. Uh, and it would, I think it would make you stronger. I think it would make mm. you stronger to see such a thing, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and maybe stronger in, in, in whatever, you know, belief system that you have. Right, uh, right, right. You know, because, you know, as it is, you know, people can go their entire lives and most people will say they've never, you know, never seen anything. We were having another discussion uh, recently about it, and I said, if there is such a thing, and the, you know there are ghosts, and it, there are such a restrictions, you know, between one dimension and another, it's got to be intensely hard to be able to manifest something like that in the real world. This is all, you know, like these are those great discussions you have at, you know, three thirty in the morning when you're you're watching The Exorcist or something like that, you know, <laughs> bag of bones or bag of, bones. bag of bones. Well, they actually did make Heredity. bag of bones a movie. Yeah. Someone asked if you'd seen Heredity. I haven't. I've, I've, I've heard good things about it, though. You haven't watched it? I haven't that? watched it yet. Oh. No. Well, I've yeah, heard we have, that was Someone asked how many sketchbooks. We have three sketchbooks. There's two up online. Our website is up at Alan Williams Studio. Do, do they mean published sketchbooks, little ones? Or are they talking yes. about sketchbooks they draw in? I don't know. Um, how many sketchbooks do you have? He has countless sketchbooks, believe me, if, if you want to talk yeah. about. If you mean sketchbooks that I draw in, then I have like sketchbooks everywhere. Um, if you mean published, like published sketches in a book, that you can then we buy. have we have three booklets. Three booklets types. like yeah. that. We're doing an actual hardcover book in this yeah, next year. And he's got his whole Twitch set up right here. Look, there's two so, cameras on him right so now. This is doing frame lapse, right? So uh, it's doing which a time is, lapse thing. This is doing a 4K video, which is higher resolution. So my idea is to be able to put the frame lapse stuff up, and then we can put the high res stuff up, like on Patreon or whatever, mm -hmm. or on you know, or on YouTube or whatever. <gasps> and then Fado said we're cool. Oh, well, thank you. Oh, how, what pencil? Six B? Um, Eight B? This, this is a six B. 6B. So, do Tombo, you even have 8B? Tombo Monos don't come in anything higher than a 6B. Uh, Mitsubishi Hyunis. Mitsubishi Hyunis are the ones that go in up to 10B. Yes. So, but I don't have They one. don't need to see that. That's right here. So. They can't see it. Can't see it. There we go. Mm -hmm. Put it under the bright light. There you go. Mitsubishi, Mitsubishi Hyuni. 10B and then the Tombo Monos. The Tombo Mono Pro. Tombo Mono 100s. 100s. 100s, yeah. Actually, yeah. Someone was like, someone told me, they said, you never said 100. I was like, I always say 100. Because yeah. he makes it a point to tell me it's the 100s. They feel different. They're pure don't let, graphite. Don't, yeah, but Not don't, that that matters. Don't let the pencil that you buy stop you from doing the work. You know? No, no, no. You have to do mm. another Ikea drawing. I did, I did do a drawing um, last year, I think, uh, with one of those free pencils they give away at Ikea. That, like, it's like... I don't know. It's what like, are you doing? I'm no. sharpening this pencil. It's very important that I put it on my belly when I sharpen it. I <laughs> wanted to make sure people saw that. It's part of the secret. The secret is putting it on your belly? <laughs> oh, yeah. Brom was at... Um, Brom was there. Yep. I actually got a print from Brom. The the new piece that he did, the uh, the, the, the jack-legged uh, satyr witch on the broom, which is a beautiful piece. A lot of beautiful work at uh, Dragon Con. Oh yeah, all the art was beautiful. And we were set up with uh, uh, Ed Binkley. If you've not seen his work, he's a digital artist who does digital pencil work that is is just pretty gorgeous. You have yes. to go check it out. So. What is the sculptor? Zihong. Uh, Zelong. Zelong. Yeah. Zelong Zhu, right? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I got uh, a book that was sent to me by a sculptor from uh, 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 China. His name is Zelong. If you guys ever get a chance. Uh, check out his work. It's some beautiful stuff. It's digital sculpts, which are amazing. He does uh, textural stuff in surface painter, and they actually look like physical sculpts, uh, but they're beautifully detailed. Uh, I guess he works with the Manus Workshop quite Is a bit. It? Yeah, I think it's Manus Workshop. Um, I think that's the name, but I don't think it's. Can I, you'd have to get the book to see. Mm. It's it's on my it's on the Facebook. I post, posted it on the Shiflet site. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That is true. On the Shiflet sculpting Whatever. page. Did you study anatomy at any point? I study anatomy constantly. I actually do. I have. I don't know if, if you've seen any of my other stuff, but I do some figure drawing, and, and sometimes I like just to do pure figure work. 
Um, I don't I, I don't do a lot of life drawing because I you know like I said I like to take time, and uh, and it's usually you know too expensive to hire a model to come to your house for three months or two, or, or two weeks even. But I do like to I work from photography quite a lot, which I'll obviously. Uh, changes the model a bit I mean you know but but I make allowances for that in you know in the drawing uh, but I do I, I I like I have I have tons of uh, figure reference I have uh, boards dedicated to that too on like Pinterest Pinterest is your go-to well it is for a starting point I mean the it's both uh, it's the thing is is that they're most of the stuff on Pinterest is curated, but then again, it's also very curated, which means that a lot of people see it. So, if you see something on there that inspires you, you have to do something pretty transformational to when you when it, you yeah. when you do your own idea. Uh, if you have if you see something that is inspiring, uh, this is a thing that I've kind of been on about to you a lot lately. Is um, it's t it's totally acceptable Oops, to sorry. be inspired and work on something that it led you to, so long as you, you transform it, as, you know, rather than appropriate it. Uh, there's a big tendency, and especially in the fine art movements right now, where I, I'm pretty sure you guys have probably seen the guys who will just, you know, they actually make a thing of lifting other people's work and, and painting it and then selling it as a fine art piece <laughs> because they lifted it. It's a big deal. Yes. Like like we're making That's a statement. So... And and they always quote Salvador Dali. Um, what is it? Uh, what he says is or something. Yeah. It's so well, unique. You know. What he says is you know, uh, great artists steal. Which is funny because if you look at Salvador Dali's work, you can't point to anything he's ever stolen except for that phrase, which actually came from T.S. Eliot. Uh, because T.S. Eliot said, "Great," he said, "Poor authors copy, great authors steal, but transform." And when when Dali uh, stole the phrase and said it, he sort of left off the transformation part. So. It's, it's just easier to copy. Well, and it's okay if you're doing like a, a study. You know, master copies are one thing, but but you know. Yeah, if, but nobody ever if, does any master copies anymore, right? Do no, they? they do it all the time. Oh, Atelier okay. people do it a lot. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, but if you're gonna be inspired by something, you know, that's great. Just transform it a bit. Yes. Make it make it something that is more uniquely you in the end. You know, uh, or, or you know, try to take it in that way that is specifically tailored to your own voice. Okay. I lost our. Huh? watching the streams I they sometimes people fly by him stay focused did you go to college I went to college briefly uh, I spent a, like about two or three years in college and then I had my teachers said that the kind of stuff I wanted to do I should just go and do it because I started doing contract work in college for illustration and fantasy uh, and it's not something they really taught where I was um, if I'd had to do it over now I might find an actual art school to go to instead of a liberal arts school. Uh, I might go to an atelier or something like that where it's very heavily focused on, mm. on, on painting or drawing skills. Uh, uh, that being said, after I found out those things existed, I started researching it. I bought like the Charles Bark drawing, drawing book course, mm -hmm. you know, which is the book about, you know, copying the master casts and all that. Um, and sort of went on my own kind of uh, uh, exploration and, and trying to learn how to, you know, learn what it was that I had missed by not going to like an academic drawing setting. Right, right. Uh, when I say academic drawing, I mean more like a an art school, an art right. atelier. You know. Someone asked if you thought that Dolly was <clears throat> possibly being satirical. Then I think I think maybe that that was what was going on. I think maybe he was. It was just this really huge inside joke that he was saying great artists steal, and he completely left off that part because it, he was actually stealing that phrase. And, and but he did kind of transform it too, because he, he, he by leaving off that part, it was a transformation. What I what I what I you know the people who normally use that phrase as a as a as a fallback though are the people that I've seen that are actually copying other people's work like mm -hmm. almost line for line, and saying well everybody steals. I'm, or Dolly said you know great artists steal. And I go, well I I really like for you to point at Dolly's work and show me something that was stolen. Right. You know uh, because that you know is an indicator of what the real philosophy was all about and you know okay. whether you like Dolly or not he definitely was a, a transformative you know? kind of an artist you know what else do you think you want to do with it <laughs> I actually have a I have a sorry in, in college I had a friend who had an original Dolly sketch that they that he, he gave her on a ferry 
And I was like, there's no telling what such a thing would be worth. I mean, they would never sell it, but. This. Uh, how long have you done this? And have you ever done book or album covers? Yes, you've done book covers. Uh, I've done and some book covers. One album cover. I did it when I was very young. Uh, and in college. Ooh, before me. And it was in Franklin, Tennessee. Maybe. I went to Middle Tennessee State University for a while. I did an album cover for CBS Records for a country singer named George Jones. Uh, it was only meant to go out to universities, and it was for a song that they... The big story behind it was it had a... It had a the cover, what they wanted, was uh, a picture of George Jones and Elvis, Jim Bean Decanter. Yes. And uh, on the TV in the background, they wanted Fred Flintstone because the name of the song was Yabba Dabba Doo, The King Is Gone and So Are You. Uh, but but the big controversy was that somebody at CBS Records forgot to clear the copyright with Hanna-Barbera. <laughs> and so they ended and up... And why copyright is so important, because they did what? They destroyed they, all they, of them. They recalled every single one of the album covers and destroyed them. Yes. Uh, I have one of the, like, two that are in existence now. Yeah, I think my, right. my parents have one and I have one. Uh, yes. But that being said, I'm actually doing... Uh, going to be doing some album cover work for a uh, I can't say who it is yet right. but it but it's a, it's it's a, like an industrial artist he does some really uh, beautiful techno stuff that's pretty pretty nice Visual Jamie and uh, Rachel are huh? connecting because they follow each other on Twitch Oh cool <laughs> That's cool. we just started getting in we did a test on Twitch what was it yesterday or day yes. before Yes under the same name as here yeah. on Instagram I underscore just jaw Yeah if you guys want to follow and we'll figure out more how to uh, yeah. how to do it and start doing those uh start doing twitch streams yeah. so this is one of the favorite things you've drawn yet Tranis oh. the man says oh, thank you it's a uh, very much uh, you know as i talk i sort of go back and forth like these camera the way that the cameras are set up they're only showing like probably this much of it but as I draw, I forget where I'm at and what I, what's being recorded. But, you know, I probably should move this up so that it sees the whole thing. But the further up it, it goes, the less you know detail you see. So there's a catch twenty two thing going on. Visual uh, Jamie and Rachel said you have to get on Twitch. Okay, they would watch. All right. Well, we definitely have uh, have uh, have started have started this the process. So I've been thinking about doing a, especially for uh, you know. Uh, the upcoming uh, Christmas holidays and all that, uh, doing a uh, a Krampus type illustration. Mm -hmm. Well, they want to see your workstation and tools. You want to see oh, tools? Yeah. Tools. So here are some tools. I keep, you know, these are from do Anatomy you, Tools, and I have do you know exactly where you're going with this, or do you just roll with it? I'm just rolling with it. I'm I'm feeling my way through it, and I typically will have a, I have some ideas about what I want to do. But I also uh, am responding to uh, what I'm led to by, by just drawing on it kind of in a stream of consciousness sort of way. What is that? No, oh, that's your ideas. Notes. Notes and ideas. So when I do, when I do... Uh, this is uh, my table he stole and my car brush that you I'm gonna, stole. I'm going to paint with this. That's why I took it. Okay. <laughs> that's for my car. Yeah. Someone earlier asked what kind of cars we drive. Uh. Uh, we have a, a, a tiny, tiny little Honda Fit. A Honda Fit and the one your grandmother gave. And the grandma's car. <laughs> There's his Cintiq and Israel. It's a doggy. He is. Doggo. He, he is unaffected. Like, yeah, well, he does not care. <laughs> so I have a lot of tools and stuff, but but you got to remember that. This is a collection that has been 30 years in the making yes. of stuff. You know, this is not stuff that I ran out and bought overnight. So yes. my studio has got a lot of stuff in it. But um, I have I have, I have have pencils in the studio that I had before I met Vicky. It, I'm yeah. sure you do. So. The dolls are new acquisitions. Yeah. It's kind of a mess over there. But here's a piece I'm, I'm, I've started. I'd light them out on the board, and I'm going to start with, like, an acrylic underpainting pretty soon. Uh, oh, cool. And you can see the drawing that I did beforehand. That's the drawing that well, you did. Well, it's a print of the drawing. The drawing's print, a, yeah, a yeah. third that size. But oh, even smaller. Yeah, it is about a third, yeah. Do you consider yourself a surrealist? Do you describe it to any current artistic movements? Um, I, I Ooh, haven't a... thought about how to define that, how to define myself. I feel like, uh, 
I call him a contemporary artist because well, he's not dead. <laughs> people, well, uh, there is a Sorry. there is a movement that is um, uh, the, what is it called? Um, uh, fantastic realism or imaginary uh, what's imaginative it realism. Imaginative realism, which I tend I, I do as well as this, which this probably would flip closer to being something more surreal, I guess. Um, I feel like being in a movement is something that people ascribe to you after. long after you've done whatever it is you do. Uh, and so I don't, I don't really think about it that much. Because um, you can't really. Well, you know, I actually told, I had, I had a gallery owner once when I said something about, oh, this person was kind of a surrealist. He goes, well, no, if he's alive and it's today, it's not surreal. Mm. It's the surreal movement apparently was a period. Right. And he said, if you didn't live in that period, you can't really call yourself a surrealist. I'm like, uh, but, you know, but then again, there's always somebody that's willing to, you know, tell you what you can't do as an artist, right? Yes. Uh, I, I am not one of those people. I would say... Ah, sorry. I'm you know, showing this out of your face. What what I do, I don't know what to really call it. I, I, I get I get categorized in dark arts a lot, I guess. But you're not really... But, uh, but the, the nature of the work that I do, even though the visual language is similar to a lot of dark arts... The nature is a little uh, less dark, I guess you could say, in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. um, at least for me, for my part of it, you know, there, are, you know, people bring whatever they want to the work that you do. Yes, Melbourne, Australia says hello. Oh, oh awesome. someone is writing to us in kanji. I'm sorry, I can't translate. I mean, someone has told me that I could, yes, I could open another thing and translate, but I can't. I'm sorry. Well, it's hard to do on your phone. For yeah, one, but. Um, Um, our website is up at Alan Williams Studio. That's also our YouTube channel. And uh, you or I just draw on Twitter. Yep. And here, of course, your I underscore just draw. And on Twitch now, you'll be I underscore just draw. Right. Uh, you mentioned drawing your stream of consciousness, which is a trait of surrealism. That's why they were curious. Oh, that's cool. Uh, you know, I would, I would have no qualms about uh, categorizing myself and, and some of the pieces that I do is, as, as a surrealist, I guess you could say, because it is a distortion of reality, which is what surreality is, mm -hmm. I guess, you know, um, and, and, and a, in part, you know, um, mm -hmm. so I think that's one way of uh, uh, describing it, at least. Do you see or perceive music as you draw? Uh, very often I do listen to music. Um, I think uh, there, but he's talking about seeing or perceiving. As no, a writer, no. I now believe it's all music. Physically, I do. Because I, definitely music will have an impact on what comes out sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, you know, and, and very often I'll, I listen to uh, when I'm not... like I, It's a mood thing. So sometimes it's music and very often it's audiobooks. Because I listen to mm -hmm. a lot of audiobooks as well. Because it occupies a different part of my brain at the same... I can, I can stay awake for 24 hours straight if I'm listening to a good audiobook. It's very uh, easy for me to lose track of time because uh, I fall into that story, and my 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 body is is responding visually. I'm, the visual mm -hmm. part of my brain is still active here, so I'm like using both sides at the same yes. time. Someone's asked any plans for a book? Yes. Yes. We are pulling the book together, an art book, an art coffee table book. Um, and as of right now, the the title will be the Covenant or mm -hmm. Covenant Covenant after the show that that we did uh, recently. Which one was very, very fun. Was much, much, much fun. And oh yeah, Copro Gallery. They have another opening tonight. Yeah, if you're ever, opening. Yep. If you're ever around Copro uh, in Santa Monica, it's a great gallery to go to. Here, you know what? Hmm? You He's know what trying to run away from me because I saw that his he needs me to clean his ears. Oh. <laughs> the we dog. have we have a dog that has ear issues. So. <sighs> Lovely lab. Let's see. There were some other questions. Maybe imaginary realism with the specialty, special studies in beautiful decay. And then someone asked, do you ever dabble in more gory horror stuff? Uh, you know... Not for your personal not, work. Not, not generally. Uh, pure. I actually listen to a lot of pure horror stories. Like, my favorite thing to listen to are horror stories on audiobooks. <laughs> and I watch, like, really every, every kind of horror movie I can find. Uh, but my work, I tend to have a... It tends to be... I don't know. It doesn't... It never, to me, looks very, um, very pure horror. You know, uh, not that I'm adverse to it. Uh, it just, mm -hmm. I, I tend to like take a different, slightly different, you know, viewpoint of, of when I get to my own work. 
uh, uh, people who've been here before have heard me say this. Uh, I like challenging the fact that that beautiful things are good and grotesque things are wicked. Uh, it's a big it's a it's a big thing with uh, a lot of the work that I do because I think in a lot of ways it's a foundational thing that that people come to believe. Uh, when they're young, but but actually, what it does is it, it gets you uh, ingrained with this idea that you can judge people's nature not by the virtue of their actions, but what they look like. Yeah. And that's something that I really fight hard against uh, in the world because I see too many people uh, trying to make false judgments about people because of their physiological differences. You know? Yes. So uh, I, that's probably went way further than you were asking in terms of, <laughs> but I like horror and I do like some gory horror, you know, uh, it's just that I typically like more, uh, uh, subtle horror in terms mm -hmm. of like, you know, Hellraiser I loved when I was younger. I still go back and watch it kind of with nostalgia, but I'm not, that's not the kind of horror that I, that I find the most horrific. Right. The most horrific stuff to me is this, is the stuff that's very subtle Yeah. that, that just sort of, uh, Right. Uh, it has, has just a touch of supernatural in it sometimes. Rachel yeah. asks on this piece, you have one side lighter. Do you line, sketch it out, and then fill it in the shading afterwards? Uh, some, yeah, about because like this, like this what, I, what, it, what this shape started off with, let's say, I don't know if I can, if there's, I'll just, I'm going to make one that I might randomly, I might erase, but, but say the shape, this shape started off kind of like me doing like something like this, you know? can't even see that right it's and so it, light so and here's the thing one of the reasons why I get like very organic shapes is because I look at this once I put down the line I have this this thing in my head that I don't want to erase it unless it really absolutely will not work right so I look at it and I go what could this this line already indicates a shape in reality a form that I can that I can play with right mm -hmm. and so I try to I try to find that form then within within that external line right and so, can you see it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can. I was messing. I was playing. Right. So I look at it and I go, okay, if this were real, you know, how would these shapes overlap, and where would the where would the folds be? The where joint they, or something. Right, and the striations of uh, of muscles underneath the flesh. Uh, one of the things you can you can actually look at for for like uh, the kind of wrinkles that hit the corners of edges of things is. Uh, I actually used to look at a lot of bodybuilding books because those guys get insanely ripped. And even though I don't really, I'm not so much into that aesthetic, uh, at least, you know, not for myself because it's really, you know, hard to do. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I like looking at the fact that like tendons would, would, would stick out and they would look like, like a tendon. This could be a tendon here and that there would be like striations across it, stretched taut, you know. And I especially love to look at um, super old people who have their bones and their body have, have grown paper. The skin has grown paper thin. So you can see every line of the like what what's underneath. And I, mean, I think that's some really beautiful form. Yeah, because people were asking um, if you had any uh, tips for painting and drawing more realistically. And I guess that uh, answers that question well, too. Well, if you're gonna well, if you're gonna draw and you want to draw realistically, uh, you can do nothing better than to study realism, right? So, so uh, you know the thing is, you don't make up uh, realism. Uh, it's it's very rare to find somebody who can uh, just you know like make up a human form that is 100% believable on the spot. Mm -hmm. So you know use as much reference as you can for realism uh, mm -hmm. because that's what the hyperrealists do. You know, uh, but you have to you still have to compose it yourself and you still have to you know have whatever the content is. I mean, unless your content is hyper or you know just the fact that it's realistic. You know, which there's that too, because hyperrealism is kind of about, you know, uh, making this flat plane look as believable as possible. Mm -hmm. You know, I, uh, I'm seeing all these names from that are following you on Twitch, like a bunch of. Oh really? Yes. That's cool. You know, we haven't. I put up a test. We did a test run on Twitch, and I'm thankful for the people who uh, actually jumped on there just to look at that. You know, so so you can. I don't know if you can see it now or not, but uh, you can go over a little bit. Okay, go ahead. And, Go closer. So, mm -hmm. so that's that's kind of how things will start, right? And this, I'll keep playing with the shapes and the, the repetitive patterns until it, it builds up into this, this kind of thing. Uh -huh. You know, uh, we have like fifteen minutes left. Oh really? Yes. Well, that was quick. I know it's so quick. I know. 
So. Did we pick a day for if you're going to do a Twitch screen? screen? We, we haven't picked it yet. Screen. What's what's a good day to, to do? I, um, you know, I mean, we'll have to do a poll and see what like uh, what day most people have, find to be most convenient for such a thing. I mean, because we work at home and it can be any day for us. Pretty that much. is true. So. It could be any time during the day too. This is true, except <gasps> for in the like morning. A, <laughs> it could be like two in the afternoon. This is yeah. We could actually. Okay. Because two in the afternoon might not be two in the afternoon for everybody else in Mexico and Melbourne. All the fun places. So, you know, I kind of um, drew this absentmindedly, this piece here, but I kind of really like it now, so it's going to stay. Mm -hmm. uh, I like the shape, you know, the way that... Uh, speaking of uh, somebody who draws and, and paints with like a, a nod towards realism, but still turns it into their own thing... Uh, there's an artist um, whose I think his last name is Golaucho, in a, uh, or Golonghi. I'll have to look it up. I'll I'll look it up or post it. It's either Golaucho or Golonghi, but he does these absolutely beautiful drawings, and he'll have like half of a human figure that will bleed off into completely black space, and mm -hmm. and like it like it's you know it, yeah. it's some beautiful stuff though. Very see it it it's it's not that challenging to draw a beautiful person and make them look beautiful. What's really challenging is to draw a regular human being and see them with those kinds of eyes that make them just look incredibly beautiful. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that, that he does. And many artists, you know, that are of, like, in that, in that vein can do yes. that. Yes. You know? Uh, Copper Crow Inc. We have, we usually stream here on Instagram and it's nine o'clock central standard time on Saturday evenings, which probably isn't the best time since other people might go out. Whoops. And I was so gonna... that are consistent. That's consistent here on Instagram. We haven't figured out what we're doing with Twitch yet. I was going to say though that we are still going to main, we're going to still do an Instagram uh, stream. We're not going to like some people may you know you know not want to you know learn an entirely new system and all that. But uh, so we're still going to continue to do some inst the Instagram stream as well. Uh, we're just going to have a, you know a, a Twitch stream that we're going to do as well. Yeah, you should see my face when. <laughs> Huh? I opened Twitch and was like, "Oh my God, it's a whole new platform." Yeah, <laughs> but see, I like doing that. It makes I love I, I love digging into something. Uh, Are you a fan of Mobius and Bernie Wrightson? Oh, because your work a, reminds very much. Uh, the details remind them of. Uh, I, I love the elegant simplicity uh, and sometimes very much complicated stuff that, that Mobius would do, and uh -huh. of course Bernie Wrightson, uh, his uh, the Frankenstein, uh, uh, the Frankenstein book was like very th that he did was. Uh, instrumental and hey, sit down. It, it actually has a lot to do with why I dig into the the, the, super, the super detailed like line element of some of the stuff that I do. Uh, Wrightson, Franklin Booth, uh, uh, Dory Etchings, uh, uh, you know, and those and Durer and those guys that that have you know just insane amounts of uh, noise. When mm -hmm. I say noise, it's a texture that they have right. in overall the entire Detail. piece. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Carlos asks, it seems that you love pencils and you come up with the craziest pencil art I've ever seen. What has kept you using them? Um, I feel like that well, there was a point where I started actually painting a lot and I did a lot of color work. And then I felt like I wasn't getting that far as I wanted to, going as far as I wanted to with the color work. And I started talking to some classically trained painters and reading about it. And I came across this phrase often. And a lot of the classical painters uh, said that Painting and drawing are the same are the same thing, and and I was like, why would they say that? You know, because it just doesn't feel the same. Right. And then I started, I said, well, I'm just going to go back and foundationally dig into drawing mm -hmm. uh, until I can get it. You know, I'm going to see what, how far I can take it. And then I did that, and then I started painting again, and I started feeling a little bit an inkling of what they're like the tip of the iceberg of what they're talking about. You know what I mean? Uh, because it. It, it it is very much for me when I paint. It's it's very much drawing with mm -hmm. with with a with a brush. Uh, I know that sounds, you know, kind of simplistic, but it's one of those things. It's like uh, it's like learning a chess move that is a simple chess move, but knowing how it is applied is is, is where everything lies, right? Uh, and learning how to do something like that. Uh, that's basically the reason I dug back into drawing because I I, I, li I did when we were doing mm -hmm. like fairs and art shows and stuff. Oh yeah, in the in the late nineties, I would I was painting a lot more then than I do now. Uh, but now when I paint, I get a lot more of what I want out of it because right. I've done this so yes. much. Mm -hmm. So I hope that answered your question. I think so. 
You've sketched that new appendage so quickly. It's like magic how it just appeared. Oh, well, um, thanks. You know, I, I, I sort of feel like a lot of times that I'm listening to the drawing as it's talking to me. And when somebody, when you asked that, it was like, it just felt, or not that person, but when somebody asked me how, how these come about, it just, it felt right. And a lot of what I do is me responding. Like I'll, I don't often have an entire composition in my head. Occasionally I do contract work. I have to, because right. you have to know what you're doing before right, right. you start it. Uh, but I also love to just get into it and respond to what happens from the initial, like I did this, uh, this came, I don't think that this even happened in the, when we were drawing on no, it the first, no, so no, this no. sort of happened. The, and it that happened this Sunday, creates Sunday kind or of a Monday after you, know. you did it. So I, I do a lot of that where I, I'll sort of just f follow the drawing and try to listen to it, I guess. Um, it's, I know it sounds a bit weird, but, but the medium that you work in uh, communicates with you on a, on a certain level, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, this is the part of it that I like is when, when things happen and they tend and, and it works out because you're, you're being uh, responsive to the medium. I guess. Yes. We have less than 10 minutes to go. That was quick. You know what? You can stream for longer on Twitch. Oh, yeah? Yes. So, and I was going to say, too, that uh, at the same time that we do the stream, uh, we're also going to be recording it because, uh, I mean, you can record. I guess you can move it directly from Twitch to YouTube at some point. But um, That is what I have been told, but yeah. I do not know how to do that yet. But, um, <laughs> but I, do know how to rec I do know how to actually just record as well in, in high def, but I don't know if people, uh, you know, I don't know what level most people want to see the drawings at because, you know, if you, I mean, obviously if you do something 4K and you do a, a 10 hour drawing, yeah. that's, that's going to be like, mm -hmm. I don't know, 30 or 40 gigs long. Yeah. I don't know okay. how long it'll be. But yes, it's something's... We, someone asked if we sell our finished pieces. Yes, we do sell it. It's on the website at Alan Lane Studio. And uh, our YouTube channel is Alan Williams Studio. The website is up and functional. There's a deal on shipping because I don't have the shipping set up right. Um, Rachel says, yes, you can record straight to your computer at the same time you stream. I'm using that uh, free software right now to do all of it. The uh, I guess it's OBS, I oh, think yeah. it's called. That's what she says. Yeah. That's if you're using OBS, she yeah, said. That's what I'm, that's what I, that's, I did a little bit, I got the camera in yesterday and started researching it. Yes. And, it, and then it, we did the whole, oh, can you hear us? Oh, oh, don't say anything embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> but you so, don't have a camera for your face yet. I'm, my face isn't all that important. So. Oh no, people like looking at your face. Mm. You're okay. You'll be okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm making a she made, say she, you can show my face tonight because I have my eyebrows on. <laughs> she, oh, fine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, we went and did family <laughs> portrait type stuff today. So. Yes. Which camera did you get? You got some Logitech. This, I got I got the uh, the Logitech Brio 4K. Okay. So. How much time do you spend sketching during the day? You know, uh, it's I. I'm either sketching or drawing for for most of my my waking time. Mm -hmm. Well, so, if it's not coffee, sometimes there's coffee. Sometimes there's coffee, and and, and other times there's paintings. So. That's true. Uh, yes. And then my family too. We do things um, sometimes. I, I can't really recall any of them right now, but we do them. <laughs> <laughs> Visual Jamie understands. I have my eyebrows are brown, so or I mean blonde. So if I don't put them on you can barely she see she has very pale eyebrows yes it just What's looks it? like she's surprised all the time <laughs> do not <laughs> asshole <laughs> our twitch name is the same here is on uh instagram i underscore just draw <laughs> oh my gosh i'm so happy i finally got uh my Wait, you can see my eyebrows see? Mm -hmm. i have eyebrows tonight <laughs> and eyelashes I got my uh, my daughter interested in Doctor Who, so she's been oh my streaming gosh. Doctor she's Who like constantly. She's Doctor Who crazy. The, the new version. She hasn't seen the old version stuff yet. So. That's see. just a non sequitur, by the way. I just do yes. that. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I stream without a face cam. Logitech is sassy with streaming two of the same cam, so I just yeah. do the art cam. I'm great with not without having a face cam. I know. See, we're having eyebrow discussions now. Jamie just put her eyebrows on. You, can't, you know, you can't help it. Uh, on that note. That's funny. 
something you'll never understand because you have those I perfect have man I have, eyebrows. I have dense eyebrows. <laughs> No, they're not. They, they get really like very mentally. <laughs> see if, if I don't trim my that eyebrows. Reference. If I don't trim my eyebrows, it looks like I'm wearing catfish on my. This is a little mentat, right? Everybody knows that, right? Dune mentat. From Dune, the mentats. <laughs> you know, you're older. What is it you said? You know, you're older when you go to the hairdresser and they trim your. And they eyebrows. trim your eyebrows and your <laughs> nose hair. Hmm. <laughs> would you consider taking psychedelics to enhance your creativity? Uh, sure. That's the short answer. <laughs> uh, but, but I've never but done it. I've never done it. Uh, you know, I've been reading a lot about stuff like DMT and things that are, uh, you know, very short lived. Uh, yes. You know. uh, I just, I've never, yeah. I've never done that. You know, um, I mean, I've done, I've been pretty boring, I guess you could say. Uh, I've never done much in terms of, uh, you it's know, okay. psychedelics or. That's uh, okay. Uh, He's fun to begin with. Well. You know, but but from what I from what I've read though, it, it's it's a it's a kind of if approached in the right way, it's can be very profound. Uh, Jamie's so. about to go to the soy milk opening. Oh so yeah, her eyebrows got to be on point. You better, man. You're soy milk very lucky. Sun. I love I love soy milk's work. Um, you know what's funny is I I ran across um, soy milk online before I knew she was a painter. Uh, she had posted a song that she had made. Uh, it was called Skinny. She, uh, she was doing a cover of Skinny Love, I guess, uh, which is beautiful if you can find it. Um, she actually has a great singing voice as well, uh, but but she does some 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 beautiful work. Have fun tonight! Oh my gosh! Where, where are you at that you're going to soy milk? Oh, it's got to be in California. Yeah, it has to be California. So. Uh, it is almost time to take off, you guys. So, uh, yes, her work is beautiful. That's the pencil he's using is the same pencil he used down the, to lay down the first layer. Mm -hmm. It's a Tombow Mono 100 6B. 6B. Yeah. Yes, she does singing. Yeah, find her singing. Mm. I, I think the only thing I've ever heard is, uh, like I said, she did a cover for, I guess, her boyfriend at the time. I don't know. Uh, uh, it was a cover of the song called Skinny Love. And uh, I actually still have it because I found... I. I found a way to download it because that's one of the things I do when I find stuff I like that don't seem to be, you know, available yeah. like in like iTunes or stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, I'm and, gonna have to. But cut it, this off here. she did a she did a really great job. I actually heard that before I actually heard the original version of Skinny Love I and know. sort of prefer her version. I know. Uh, All right, it's been great being with you guys, and um, we will figure out what day we want to do Twitch or something like that. See you next Saturday here. I think we'll put up a poll, maybe. Put up a poll, see which what day we want, would be a good one. And hello, Venezuela. We oh, will awesome. talk to you guys later and see more. Thanks for showing up. Yes, absolutely. Next show we'll be at is AlexCon. Yep, and up in, that's up in... Uh, uh, Reading, PA. Reading, PA. Reading, yeah. So yeah, if you're Redding. if you're anywhere near Reading, PA, spelled reading, reading, yeah, <laughs> drop in and say hi. Yes, I'll be on the. I did the showcase, the the two day part of the yeah, show. Yeah, we're there Friday and Saturday. Friday and Saturday. All right, we will talk to you guys later. Enjoy, have a great night. Enjoy, have fun at Soy Milk's opening, Jamie. And everybody else have fun drawing. Yes, uh, draw something. Yeah, doesn't matter how much you draw. Ten minutes a day, fifteen minutes a day, just do something. Yep. It, you know, if you if you're into it. So if like you're not into around. it, do it even more. Take a walk around the block. Yeah. You're all something. So. Thanks, guys. Bye.